Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans. I am sitting here now in my new Skokie office. We just moved here. It is at 4500 Oakton, and I hope you'll come and, and visit. Some of you know about the Chicago office. We were there for over 20 years, and we are all out of that office now. When I say all, it was kind of a one-stop shopping with elected officials at all levels of government that we shared office space with. That office is now shut down and here I am in this wonderful office where all of my staff is located. Please come and visit. I was on my way out of town from Washington DC on the plane, got off and found out that Donald Trump had been indicted. So I am now taping what I learned afterwards, you'll see the rest of pans and plans that I did about other issues after this. But I really wanted to talk to you for a minute about Donald Trump. He was indicted by a grand jury. These are ordinary people who are doing their civic duty to listen to testimony, to make decisions about whether somebody, any American, there are grand juries all the time, any American, in their view, may have violated the law and should go to trial. Well, Donald Trump is one of those Americans, and they decided after listening to the testimony, doing their civic duty, people of all different backgrounds, all different ages, they decided that there was sufficient evidence to say that Donald Trump had illegally concealed hush money that was given to Stormy Daniels in order to avoid, at the beginning of his run for president of the United States, the fact that he had this illicit affair. So now he has an opportunity, as all Americans do, to go to trial, to have all kinds of opportunities to challenge what the indictment says, and to have his day in court. What did the Republicans have to say? Well, we know that Kevin McCarthy, who is now the Speaker of the House, said that, well, Americans will simply not tolerate this injustice. The Democrats have weaponized this sacred system of justice on behalf of our hatred of, uh, of Donald Trump, very personal, very political. Well, that's just simply not the case. So now going forward, we'll see how this, how this proceeds. And as you know, I think, this is only one of the potential indictments against Donald Trump for all kinds of potential violations of the law of the land. And so this is, is playing out. But in the meantime, what we see from the Republicans is bill after bill, you'll hear about some of them, that have been introduced that really harm the American people directly and put Americans at risk of perhaps cutting Social Security or Medicare or taking away reproductive rights. That's the mission that they are on. We will continue in the Congress to do our work but now law enforcement is in charge and we will see how that goes. So back to pans and plans that I had done originally. Well, another school shooting. The 19th just this year at schools and of course many more throughout the country of people have been killed by, by guns. We saw three nine-year-olds slaughtered at their school, and we saw three faculty members killed at their school. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And so the President of the United States, Joe Biden, just renewed his call for an assault weapons ban. We need to do it, even though some of the Republicans are saying this won't make any difference. Really? We know that when there was an assault weapons ban, which there was during the Clinton administration, that these kinds of killings with assault weapons dropped by 70%. So we can't be told. 
that this doesn't work. It would work. And then of course, the so-called everyday shootings, 112 people died this year in the city of Chicago at the hands of guns. So, you know, we, we just have to keep fighting, keep working. We are, and we have made some progress. We know one thing for sure, the American people are with us. So we just need to keep pushing. Because they are really in the hands of big oil and big gas. The Republicans passed a bill in the House of Representatives. They do have the slim majority. We like to call Polluters Over People Act because what this legislation would do is to repeal some of the things that we have already done. And this bill, I don't believe, is going to become law. What we have already done in some of the bills that were passed in the last session of, of Congress they would repeal those things and absolutely make the climate worse. It wouldn't do anything. And in fact, the International Panel on Climate Change, which just released its report, basically told us that time is pretty much up. That if we don't make strides, big strides, within the next decade, not after the next decade, within the next decade to do something about protecting us from fossil fuel emissions, then we are going to see the worst examples of climate change and it could be irreversible. So we have to act right now. The Republicans continue to want to go in the opposite direction. I introduced a piece of legislation along with my friend Sherrod Brown, Senator Sherrod Brown, that deals with safe staffing standards for hospitals. You may remember I talked about we need to have more healthcare providers in nursing homes, but now we're talking about hospitals. California has already done that. And to no one's surprise, lives are saved when there are enough nurses in the hospitals. At the press conference that we had, I had the leaders and members of National Nurses United Organization, the American Federation of Teachers, and AFSME, they are the state and local workers, and they were all talking about how there are enough nurses, except a lot of them have actually fled being nurses. You know what? There are now 4 million registered nurses who are equipped to be nurses at this moment, but only about 3 million are active nurses right now. And a lot of that has to do with how stressful this work is and how they worry. I've talked to nurses who worry, you know, did was I able to turn all my patients that I needed to turn and to serve them well. They worry about that when they get home because they just have too many. So the staffing standards are very, very important. There were probably about 30 or more people at this press conference. A number of legislators and our, and our chant was safe staffing saves lives. This legislation began with 55 original co-sponsors. This is a good start. As you know, loved ones of ours go into the hospital or we go into the hospital, you want to know that there are a good number of nurses ready to answer when that buzzer gets pressed. This is common sense legislation. It is beginning to pass in different legislatures around the country, but we need to have it as a national piece of legislation. I'm looking forward to working for that. On Tuesday, I spoke at a press conference talking about how we have to protect the SNAP program. SNAP used to be called the food stamp program, and it is the most effective program that we have in the United States of America to end hunger in our country. Let's remember, we are the richest country in the world, at the richest moment in history. And there is no excuse for Americans going hungry. And what we know is that more than 40 million people rely on the SNAP program, mostly children, people with disabilities, and senior citizens that need the help 
to put food on the table. And unfortunately, what we've seen is a $95 per month decrease in the SNAP benefit. This is partly because the cost of living adjustment has meant that social security benefits have, have gone up, but let's face it, so is the price of food. I just paid over $6 for 12 eggs. You know, we've seen at the grocery store that those prices are, are going up. And so we need to make sure that our kids are disabled and our seniors are able to get what they need in that program. And, you know, $95 to some people may not sound like a lot of money, but think of the difference in buying food for a month that $95 could do. And the difference between healthy food and not healthy food is huge. So we have to make sure that it is, that it is protected. I was part of a letter that went to Secretary Vilsack, the Secretary of Agriculture, that's where the SNAP program is in the Department of Agriculture to make sure that people have the money that they need in order to stay healthy and have food on the table. We can be very proud of our regional director of the Environmental Protection Agency, Deborah Shore, longtime friend of mine and a longtime member, 15 years on the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. She has dedicated her whole life to environmental protection. So she was in Washington and testifying before a subcommittee I'm on about the East Palestine Railroad tragedy that happened. And she was excellent at the hearing talking about how much the Environmental Protection Agency, she herself was on the ground for 14 days. The EPA is still on the ground helping that, uh, that community in Ohio. You know, I was just really happy to be at that hearing and learning exactly the role of the EPA and the good job that Deb Shore and that agency is doing. For a long time, I've been concerned about the issue of making sure that college athletes are protected by the universities, the colleges. In some cases, millions of dollars are involved in the work that they do on the field. But who is protecting them? Their healthcare in particular. And so we had a hearing about what can be done to make sure that college athletes are protected. I was involved with Northwestern University when the football players wanted to actually form a union I supported that. It didn't happen, but I think the idea of collective bargaining is very important, but we also want to make sure that the health care is protected. So this was really a hearing, the beginning of a discussion of what are we going to do to protect our college athletes. The NCAA, I don't think, is doing a good enough job, and so I think it is time for Congress to get involved. And let me just say, there are lots of local races that are happening on Tuesday, so don't miss your chance to vote. So there's a lot of issues. I'm trying to keep up with all of them and help to keep you up with all of them. So thanks for listening to my plans and pans, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.